So essentially what macros do, uh, they allow you to map multiple parameters in your audio instrument uh, MIDI effect racks uh, just to one knob and make things a lot simpler. And they've got quite a lot of uses, so I'm going to go and dive into it. Um, I've got Ableton <laughs> set up. I don't know why I found the need to say that. Obviously, it's an Ableton tutorial. I'm going to have Ableton set up. And what I'm going to do is drop in a bunch of effects onto that track. Um, so I'm going to go filter, chorus, and reverb. Now, in order to get the macros working, um, we're going to have to turn this from three separate uh, audio effects into an audio effect group. So we're going to go ahead and select all these. Uh, just hold shift down and click the top bar like so, and then the shortcut is Command G. And boom, what this has done is it's put it into an audio effect rack. And in order to see the macro function, uh, it's just this little button right here. Okay, and as you can see, we've got eight different possible macros we can uh, map different parameters to. Uh, just keep it at number one, because we're only gonna do one mapping in this tutorial, I guess. You can do multiple is what I'm getting at. And let's rename this by right clicking rename or command R, that was the shortcut. So in order to get the different uh, parameters mapped to the macro, um, you just have to click this button here, map. I'll bring up this little bar here, and suddenly all the parameters that you're able to map to the macro will be highlighted in green, blue, whatever you want to call that color, maybe turquoise almost. So what I'm aiming for here is kind of like a build up washout effect. So if I was doing this normally, I'd need to automate the frequency in the filter, uh, the dry wet in the chorus, and then the dry wet on the reverb as well. But if we just map it to this macro, um, all you have to do is change one knob. So in order to make the mappings it's simple, all you have to do is just click the parameter that you want to map, click that, and then just map it to there. And as you can see on the top left, it's brought up all these different controls. Min and max, uh, minimum and maximum values is where you want your knob to be. So the minimum is going to be the knob fully turned down and the maximum is going to be the knob fully cranked up. So maybe I want the effect to only go up to maybe three... Let's go 3000. No, not 300. <laughs> so when the macro knob is cranked up all the way to the max, um, it only hits 3K and won't go any further. So yeah, it's your minimum and maximum values. Um, let's move on to the chorus, dry wet. Click that and then map to that. Knob set zero, I want zero dry wet and probably maybe about 50% on maximum knob crank. Yep. Decay time, we'll map that as well to one let's start it with a quick actually let's start it around one second and then maximum value three four seconds almost five and then we'll do the dry wet as well and map that to maybe 60 percent cool and so once you've finished mapping all your different uh, parameters it's just a matter of clicking this map button again and boom you can adjust this knob and see how it's also adjusting the parameters inside the filter and the chorus and then the reverb as well um, when I do this and a quick note once you've made macro mappings You can't go and create automation with this or move the knob whatsoever If you want to kind of change that you're gonna have to go back into the mappings and then change it there or you're gonna have to map that and Just delete it from there. I wonder if I can control Z that and then so you can automate that from now on But I want that back so command Z. Okay, so let's actually hear what we've done. That's a pretty cool effect. Um, another thing I will mention in this macro tutorial, maybe you're thinking if you want um, maybe like an inverted parameter control. Say for example, if you want the reverb to be cranked up um, when the knob is set to zero, but as you increase the knob, the dry wet goes down. It's kind of like an inverted um, effect. That's simple enough to do. Just change your min and maximum values and then swap them around. So when the knob set to zero, the dry wet's going to be the dry wet on the reverb. Sorry, is going to be at. 67% and then as the knob increases it's gonna go back down to zero Say if we had MIDI devices as well, we'll just group them together um, you can macro map That stuff as well. Say we had serum. Uh, we configured this to read the wavetable position under that, sick, um, clicked on the top bar of Serum, put that into a group, Command G, and then macro mapped that to one or whatever, and then we also had some effects as well, like a hard limit, 
can map that to macro one as well. Um, that was bad mapping. Zero to maybe not plus twenty four. Yo, cranking. Um, so say if something's outside the group as well. Um, when we go to hit map. And since it's outside this group, we can't control it with the macro, but if we dragged it inside the group, boom, suddenly the parameters glow green, and then we can map that to whatever. And say if you want to map the macro controls to your MIDI controller, it's just a matter of hitting this MIDI button, clicking on the macro you want, and then twisting the knob or whatever on your MIDI controller, and then it'll come up in this top bar, and just adjusting the min and max uh, values like you did in your macro, and boom! There we go, simple. So if you still got any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section and I'll get around to answering them. And yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Uh, <laughs> subscribe.